Hey guys, Jack here from Obsessed Fishing, and today I'm giving you a tour of my tackle room. Um, this is not necessarily a room, but I figured it's the winter, fishing's a little slow right now, and I figured why not guys, give you guys some content. And I've got a lot of questions about my rods, my arsenal, my tackle, and so I figured I'd just show you guys this kind of setup I have. I thought it was pretty cool. I've got it nice and organized right now. I've got this shelf. I got some random stuff over here on the cart, and then I've got rod racks and other things. So I'm going to walk you through it and just kind of the way I do things, at least for now. Um, and I'll even give you a quick run through of my rods because that, that's probably the most requested video I've gotten is please do a rod and rod still. Well, the problem is I don't really have a rod and reel arsenal. I have a couple rods that are old and cheap that I'm planning on replacing, and I have other rods and reels that I know I need that I don't have yet. So basically, my com my arsenal is so incomplete that I haven't really felt the need to show it. So, but we'll briefly go over it in this video because you guys ask me so much, and uh, go over my tackle, which is nice and organized right now for once, and uh, walk you through it. So stay tuned. All right, now I'm going to give you a quick run through of this one. This is kind of like my alternate storage. There's not a lot going on here. There are a few things going on here. Um, kind of walk you through this. I've got here, I've just got a box. It's actually got all my craws in it right now. A bunch of craws. I've been waiting on a Plano box to store them in. So that's all my craws right there. Um, I've got some swim baits over here. Got my swim baits over here. A few random rods here that are being worked on. Over here I've got some Alabama rigs just sitting in storage. So just keep them nice and uh, just keep them out of the way since I don't use them all that often. Then down here I've got saltwater bag, a little box of catfish stuff, a box, some random boxes with miscellaneous junk in it. Uh, this one's got some skirts and some blade baits in it. That's really random. Um, I got one here with some custom cord plastics and I've got one here with some magnum sized football jigs. Uh, Further down, I've just got a bunch. Further down, I've just got a bunch of Plano trays, empty trays that I might use eventually. So over here, I've got a few of my kind of miscellaneous rods lying around. These are rods that I'm not. These are not my everyday rods. Um, a lot of them are either stuff that's like spin cast gear for the family, um, for other people who haven't learned how to fish to use, uh, ultra light setups, bait cast setups that aren't working anymore, I've got a few salt water rods and reels over here, a lot of stuff that's just not usually, most of it's cheap combos that I used to have, or stuff that's mostly stuff for other people to use, but then there's some salt water stuff in there as well. These aren't my combos that I'm just going to take with me fishing on an average day. This over here is kind of my main tackle shelf. I keep a lot of things here. I've got stuff stored up here. I've got kind of, this is kind of my workspace area. I've got tackle here. I'm gonna walk you through this real quick, just kind of hold the camera and walk you through it and talk about why it's there. You know, it's not, not super organized, but it's organized enough that I know where stuff is. Like, I'm not looking for stuff in this setup. So let me walk you through it real quick. Starting off, we have this uh, kind of this bench here that I can use, that I can sit on to work here on this kind of desk, or I can use it to get up here, which is what I'm going to walk you through real quick. Um, a lot of this is random junk. Um, I've got some line over here, some more line. This is more of like extra line for other people. Old reels that are broken parts. I've got random miscellaneous things in here, some some dye, uh, line, KVD line and lure, um, get that to focus, KVD line and lure, always good stuff, um, what else do we have, uh, we got a bunch of random stuff, here I keep tips, rod tips, rod guides, replacements, some tape, um, painter's tape, I'll show you what that's for later, an old scale that's kind of broken, uh, Ziploc bags, paper towels, zip ties, a washcloth, other random things that I might need. And this is a belt that I'll use to strap my rods together sometimes when I'm traveling. Just a cheaper way to do it. Let's not fall down here and break this camera. Next up, we've kind of got my little tackle layer here. This is where I keep a lot of my stuff. 
Got my lucky tackle box calendar here. Shipping day coming up. Can't wait. I was really excited. This is my first LTB. I got the XL box. Got a bunch of the baits in here actually from that month. Really cool box. Uh, over here I've got some line that just came in. A bunch of line for the next year. This is all Seaguar and Vizex. I switched over last year and really, really, really enjoyed this change. I went from using a, a bunch of Berkeley Vanish, with Vanish line, which is if you're if you're using it now, if you're young and you're trying to save money, don't go with it. Um, it's a terrible, terrible line. I can't tell. I think I can't. It scares me to think of how many big giant fish I could have landed if I had switched to this earlier. So if you're gonna go with fluorocarbon, don't make, just don't go with cheap stuff. If you spend the money, because you think the line is one of the most important things. It's what connects you to the fish. So don't. If that's not a place to go cheap, so. That's why I buy the more expensive fluorocarbon. It's not that bad. A tackle worth is like $17 to $20 a spool, which is may seem like a lot to beginner anglers, but for fluorocarbon of this quality, it's not that bad. Um, I've got some random junk over here. here. I've just got a cup holder with like Sharpies, uh, a knife, different things. Uh, these are some extra hooks, uh, some swivels, uh, these trailer pegs, some scent, a, um, a bait I'm working on. I've got some miscellaneous reels that I'm working on here. And then I've got all my tools and I keep them here just because I like to keep all the stuff that I'm gonna use a lot here. So like my sunglasses are here. I've got this little hook here that I'll use to poke out the, um, I'll poke the paint out of a, uh, the eyes of jig heads with it. Come on, focus, it's not that hard. Anyway, this camera sucks at focusing right now. I don't know if I've got it in a bad setting. Anyway, um, so here's the tools. I can get multi-tools, cutters, uh, scissors, needle nose pliers, bigger pair of scissors, hole punch, file, and a lighter. I'll use all that for miscellaneous uses. Uh, that's kind of that section right there. Moving down, we've got my tackle. And this is just the bulk of my tackle that I'm gonna use every day, day in, day out. Um, over here, we've got craws and beavers. So, I got some, uh, up here we've got, I'm trying to get it to focus, it's not doing well. Um, this is uh, Berkeley Havoc Fit Bosses, and here I've got regular beavers. Uh, this is, it's kind of, it's a ton of tackle to go through, and this is a tackle room video. If you want me to do a separate video on my tackle, set, put it in the comments below. Um, here I've got worms, I got ribbon tail worms, drop shot worms, trick worms, and stick worms. As you can see, these trick worms and stick worms are huge parts of my fishing. So I have two huge boxes. These are all hard baits, um, kind of going up in the water column. We got deep diving crankbaits, medium diving crankbaits, and lipless crankbaits, shallow diving crankbaits, jerk baits, top waters. That's kind of how that goes. Here I've got a finesse box, a bunch of finesse stuff. I've got terminal tackle, chatter baits, and swim jigs, spinner baits. Frogs, buzz baits, and then just regular jigs. Then moving down even further, we've got more bulk storage. This is a more either unique baits that aren't going to be really stored very well in a regular box, or just just kind of deep storage that's like extras of what I need. So like in here, this box right here is swim baits. And um, get if I can get it to focus. The struggle is real with this focus here. Um, uh, this is a bunch of these, a bunch of Kai Tech, Fast Pro Shops, got some Havoc Sick Fishes, uh, Matt Lures, a bunch of swim baits, and these aren't going to store well in a regular Plano, so I put them in here. It's a nice little container to keep them in and keep them straight, because keeping a tail straight on a swim bait is a huge deal. Um, these are boat plastics, and I say that because they're plastic that I'm going to take with me pretty much every time I go out in a boat or something. But I'm not gonna, they just don't seem to work well for me in the Planos. So I got them in here in big Ziploc bags. Uh, we got flukes, brush hogs, horny toads, grubs, chunks, I mean tubes. Stuff that I'm not gonna use every day. Uh, and I've got extra stickos in here just because I use them so much. Um, boat plastics. Plastics I'm probably gonna take with me, but they're just not in the Planos. I may switch over to the Planos, but for now. And then these two are kind of deep storage. So like this one is plastics. So I've got extra trick worms in here and stuff. 
because I use trick worms a ton, but I've also got specialty stuff, like these bluegill baits by Bass Pro Shops. These right here, um, these bluegill style baits, I'm normally not going to use on an everyday basis. These are more during the spawn and post-spawn, trying to imitate fish on the beds, got warm mouths, that kind of thing. So more specialty baits that I'm not going to use every time. Like those baits, I'm only going to use them for maybe a one to two month window. So I'm not going to bring them every time. Same kind of goes with those hard baits. A lot of those hard baits are baits that are damaged, rusted, or scrapped for parts and other things. So that one's not really that interesting. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this for you guys. So that right there, that is my Tamain Tackle Shelf. Very cool, really like the way it's set up. I can reach in here, grab any boxes I want. I can go down there, my more deep storage, any accessories that I'm gonna probably grab on a day's. Like if I'm gonna do my LTB, I love the Lucky Tackle Boxes a lot, so I'll just grab my Lucky Tackle Box here. My orders that come in from Tackle Warehouse, just throw them right there, because I might be working with them. Anything, the reels that I'm working on, tools that I need to use it, it's all there. Tackles right there. Not that much lower, so it's not hard to get, but then the storage, the stuff that I'm going to use a little bit less or is just a tad harder to get to, and then the stuff up here is a little bit harder because you can't see it as well. That I'm not going to need that as much. So, that's kind of my tackle shelf. I really, really kind of like it a lot. I'm happy how it turned out, and I wish it would focus. Last and most certainly not least are my rods and reels. This is probably, I get requested to go over them so many times, I figure I'll just go over them briefly. As I explained earlier in the video, this isn't really my full arsenal and I don't feel satisfied. That's one of my big things for this year. I think the problem is I'm really too much of a sucker for tackle. I'll see a new bait or a new technique that I haven't tried or mastered, and I'll go spend a ton of money buying baits for that, rather than buying a new rod and reel. So this year is one thing I'm really going to step down, spend the money, and buy those rods and reels. I have a lot of cheaper combos. So a lot of these are probably going to be replaced, so I'll just go over them real quick, uh, just because I've been asked to. Um, here I've got a Mitchell 300 Pro Ultralight. This is just ultralight fishing. And I'll just the bluegill, crappie, trout, or when the bass fishing is extremely tough. Here I've got a 6.6 medium action quantum, I think it's Trip X combo. Really nice combo for the money, $50 on Walmart. 10 pound test fluorocarbon on here. Used this for a long time, probably not going to use it much anymore. It's just a two, it's a two piece rod, so it's not as sensitive. Next, I've got my main spinning rod and reel. Gonna get, hopefully get another one of these setups. This is a Lama Gloss XL2 bass rod, seven foot, one inch, um, medium heavy power. And this is a Revo S30 in the faster, that's just the regular gear ratio they have. I've got 15 pound braid on here to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader most of the time. I'll go to eight, sometimes as low as six. I uh, generally don't go more than 10 when I'm fishing the spinning rod. Next up, I've got a Quantum Octane rod and reel combo. Uh, this is really cheap, really crappy. I use it because it's what I have. It's about, it's a, it's labeled as a medium heavy power, but it's much more moderate action. There's a lot of bend to it. So I'll use it for jerk baits, crank baits. It's got 12 pound test floor carbon on it. Um, next up, we've got a Quantum, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a Quantum Ultra Rod. This is from a combo. It's a 6.6 six medium. I've got a Bass Pro Shops Pro Qualifier on there, 7.11 gear ratio, 15 pound mono. This is pretty much strictly top waters and sometimes square reels and such. Next up is one of my own, probably my only nicer rod and that I have on Stars Baitcasters. It's a Bass Pro Shops Pro Qualifier with a Generation 1 Abu Garcia Ferro Toss, 7 foot medium action, 17 pound floor car run on here. Uh, next I've got a Abu Garcia Vengeance. It's a cheap rod, uh, seven foot medium heavy. I've got a cheap, cheap, cheap floor. Uh, it's not worth a cent. Field and stream reel that came from a combo. It's like a six two to one. Got some 20 pound floor on here. The reel is junk. Gotta at least replace that, if not the rod as well. And then this is a seven foot medium heavy quantum Actress rod with a quantum Actress reel. And it's a six three to one gear ratio. I have 50 pound braid on here. Really, the setup's actually been really good to me, but the reel's just a little slow for what I use it for. And that's it for my tackle room tour. Hope you like this kind of video. If you like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments below. I didn't go, I didn't go really in depth over everything. I just kind of skimmed over the tackle, kind of I flew through the rods, and that might annoy you. But I, I didn't want to get specific. I just want to kind of show you a little bit of 
way I set it up because I think it's kind of cool. I'm actually really happy. Um, I've been I was working a long time. The only thing I could do when I couldn't fish when there's like this thin layer of ice on the ponds was to just organize it. I really like the way it came out. It's not perfect, but there's a lot of little things that I didn't show you. Little things that I do that may come out in other videos. But uh, this is kind of an overview. If you like this style of video, more informative or over my stuff, please let me know in the comments below. If you don't like it, I don't. I just won't produce it. But if you like it, I'll be sure to make these kinds of videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Click that subscribe button if you want to see more like this. We'll catch you next time. Hopefully we'll be on the water. Like really, I hope we will be. I'm tired of this cold ice stuff. Ugh.